Mike. Welcome back to my shop. Uh, it's about the uh, second week of November here in northern Utah, and it's about 34 degrees outside, so it's a good day to be in the shop working. Um, fired up the, the gas-fired furnace for the first time this season, and uh, it's just a good day to be in the shop working with a cup of coffee and turn on some tunes here in a little bit. Um, today, uh, there's been a discussion going on uh, over on Garage Journal about um, winterizing equipment, lawn and garden equipment, and so forth. Um, there are some people who choose to do nothing to get their lawn and garden equipment ready to go and have had no no issues really. Um, there's others of us that probably go a little to the other end of the extreme and go overboard. Um, so I'm just going to take you on a quick walk through today on what I do to get my uh, lawn and garden equipment ready to put away for the winter, so that it's ready to pull out in the spring and on the first or second pull, fire it up and start mowing lawns rather than tearing carburetors and everything else apart. So um, let me go ahead and get the camera repositioned over on the, uh, um, where the, where the lawn mowers here. Um, just for uh, reference, uh, I've got a 21 inch snapper, five and a half horsepower overhead brakes, uh, strap brakes and strap engine. I bought the lawn mower in summer of 1991. My uh, wife and I built our, or had a, bought our home. It had just been built. We bought our home in March of 1991. So the lawnmower is over 24, coming up on 25 years old. And it looks like it's practically brand new because I wash it every uh, um, fall before I put it away. I blow it off with compressed air. After every mow, I put an air nozzle over by the door of my shop. So I mow the lawn. I pull it over there. I blow the grass off of it. Mainly because I don't like grass in my garage where I store the lawn mower between that when, in the, during the season. So I go ahead and blow that off. Um, and then wash it before I put it away for the winter. Uh, blow it all off, wipe it down, and it looks practically brand new. So um, my, my weed eater, I do the same thing too. I kind of hit it with the pressure washer and just open up the fan, but blow it off really good. And so I don't force any water into the exhaust or carburetor or anything. And I've been doing that for 20 plus years, so it seems to work good. Usually first or second pull of the season, it fires right up and runs great. Um, the lawnmower is my original one, like I said, when I, when I we built the, or when we bought the home back in 91. Um, it runs great. I've had to do valve, uh, valve guide seal on it a couple of times. I pull the blade off and sharpen it, clean the deck out, change the oil in it. Um, other than that, I really haven't had any problem. Oh, the engagement cable that broke on it here a couple of years ago, I was able to find a replacement. So it's been a really, really good lawnmower. It was a high dollar one when I bought it. Um, back in 91, like I said, the wife and I had just uh, bought our first home, or bought our home. <clears throat> we had just uh, put our yard in and everything. We didn't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of, but I was dead set on getting a lawnmower that was good quality, something that would last. And I uh, did some research and I felt like I made a good decision because here it is almost 25 years later and it's still going strong. So um, the, the weed eater, I'd actually bought a, uh, a used one that was non running and got it working. And it lasted probably about eight years or nine years or so. So the one I have now is a home light and I've had it probably, uh, I'm guessing, uh, 12 to 15 years somewhere in that range and I do the like I said I do the same thing did I just go through and put some uh, pressure wash it clean it all off blow it off clean it up make sure things look good and it's ready to go for spring so uh, again I'll reposition the camera and bring it over and show you kind of what I do um, to get things ready to put away it's not really time consuming it'll probably seem like a little bit more it's on camera but um, and, I'm, and I'm sure I'm probably overkill I'm sure there's gonna be people who tell me I'm nuts for spending as much time on it but I figure it probably takes me an hour, two hours tops to do the weed eater, the leaf blower, and the uh, lawn mower to get it ready to put away. Um, if anything, it's two hours of my time to give me peace of mind, not worrying about it. <clears throat> so come spring, first or second pull, it's ready to go. So um, again, we'll uh, take you over into the and show you what I do on the lawn garden. Okay, so here's my home light. Uh, weed eater or uh, line trimmer actually um, <clears throat> it's just a little 30 cc <clears throat> um, I usually pull the air filter go through and clean the air filter on it um, and pull the spark plug clean it be, uh, or, or replace it depending on how the electrode looks so it's ready to go for spring um, 
here is my snapper. Like I said it's 21 inch, nothing really fancy about it, other than it's in really good condition for being just about 25 years old now. Um, so I'll go ahead and pull the uh, air filter and clean the deck and balance the blade and change the oil in it. And then let me set the camera up over here. As you can see, it's I did lose the hubcaps on the rear wheels fairly soon after get after uh, um, purchasing it. They were plastic and they slipped into these little slots here, and you bumped them or looked at them wrong, and they fell out. But other than that, um, the wheels themselves are fine. And I also replaced the front wheels. They were uh, had a plastic bushing in the center, and <clears throat> a couple years after, oh, probably six or eight years after the bushing had, little plastic bushing had failed. So I picked these up aftermarket. Same exact size and everything, but they have a steel sleeve in them. So uh, the only thing I had to do is just machine a little space here that goes on the back side here just to keep them from flopping around uh, uh, axially on the on the axle there. Okay, and, I, and again, I, I did change the uh, intake valve stem seal on this once before it started puffing a little bit of uh, smoke when you'd fire it up so uh, that seal needed to replace there quick and easy to do okay let me go ahead and set the camera up and we'll uh, clean the deck and balance the blade okay the blades off I'll go ahead and clean that and uh, you see I've still got MICs on the uh, bolt there from last time I did it. So I'll go ahead and scrape this off and inspect the blade. The blade actually doesn't look like I've hit anything. I keep the on pretty, uh, the yard pretty clean. So should just be able to breathe over that a little bit with a roll-off disc and put a new edge on it and balance it. And uh, that should be ready to go. So we'll get a scraper. And actually the underneath the deck doesn't look too bad this year either. Some of that <clears throat> can be attributed to uh, had kind of a dry year, so didn't have a lot of uh, moisture in the lawn while I was mowing it. So therefore, there's not a lot of packed grass under that. At least not compared to some. At least not compared to some years. So kind of makes a mess. Um, not much you can do about that. Just. Try to keep it contained in one area, sweep it up, and you're done, you're good to go. Shaft end of the engine. If what's the, what can happen is it'll start inside the groove of that pole. It'll start building up grass, but it'll be not, not won't be uniform. <clears throat> so there'll be hit and miss. So you'll actually see the belt uh, underneath or in the groove to where it won't be uh, all the way flush all the way around. Um, so when that happens. Let me 
you've got a light here, you shine a light in here, it's a little easier to see. When that happens, I generally just grab a cutter pin tool and just kind of run it around inside that pulley, dig out the grass that gets stuck up underneath there, turn it a little bit, dig it around underneath there. And you can tell there's nothing, I can't feel anything in that groove, but my belt is sitting nice and flush all the way around, so I don't think I have anything in that groove. No, I think we're good. So, just clean a little bit of the stuff that's falling down out of here. Off. And this is actually ready to... Uh, now, one thing, other thing I do is I'll just take a spray, a little bit of WD-40 up under the deck, and that will, anywhere there's bare metal, it'll kind of give it a light coating, but then also it kind of helps at least initially, keeps the, uh, the grass from sticking next season. So I'll go ahead and actually give this a little shot of air and knock some of this loose stuff off. And then spray a little WD-40 underneath there. So I took and uh, scraped off as much uh, of the grass as I could off of the uh, actual blade. You want to get it off so it's, it's clean because it can affect the balance of the blade. Here if you're trying to balance it, you've got a big old blob of grass hanging off of one end. Um, it's not going to be accurate in your balancing. So I think I've pretty much got the bulk of it off there. I'll go ahead and check it. Now, this is just a cheap, inexpensive little balancer. Nothing doesn't have to be anything, have to be anything high tech. Just place it on there. And you can see it's balanced pretty good from the get-go. You can also see that on the edges there really aren't any, this is a mulching blade, but there really aren't any nicks taken out of it. So if I had a couple nicks where I'd hit something, um, like I said, I keep the yard pretty clean so I don't leave stuff laying around. Um, every once in a while the neighbors will hit a ball or something over into the yard, but I usually kind of do a quick walk around the lawn before I mow. Um, if I had any nicks, I would go in and try to take them out with maybe a 24 or 36 grit roll lock disc, but seeing as how all I'm doing basically is just cleaning up the edge on this, I'm just going to go right to some 50 grit. So I am going to uh, clamp this in the vise gently. And I'm just going to hit this, breathe across this edge right here and this edge right here. Don your safety glasses and just breathe over that. And that's about it. Now what I'll do is I'll take a file. And I'll just knock the back side off so there's no burn. So I'll just lightly run across there and there. Okay. I'll turn the uh, blade around. Do the same thing. That's 
pretty much about perfect, nice and even. So this is ready to reinstall now, and you can see where I've just, I haven't really even removed any metal. I've just gone through and just put a nice clean edge on it. So I'll hit that with a little bit of WD-40 once I get it up underneath the deck, put the bolt back in it, and I can set the lawnmower back down and move on to the air filter and the uh, uh, change oil. Okay, so now we're moving on to the next phase. Now, um, I'm going to change the oil in it and then pull the air filter off and clean the air filter. Um, now, some of you will notice I've got the old style of stable sitting here and then just some 30 weight oil. I'm not endorsed by either one of these, so don't, uh, I want to make a disclaimer right now. These are just what I've been using. Um, Napa or Valvoline, they're pretty much the same thing. Uh, I just buy whatever, which, whichever one at my local Napa store that I can get uh, is on sale. So I run a straight 30 weight in this because it is just a, a summertime, spring, summer, fall time use, so it's not severe to cold temperatures. Um, so you can, you can run multi-grade. I just prefer to run a straight 30 in mine. That's all this I've ever had in it. There's a couple different ways of changing the oil. <clears throat> Some of them have a drain plug down at the base of the engine where it actually mounts to the deck of the mower. This particular one is a hex plug up underneath. Um, right next to actually where the crankshaft comes down for the blade to attach to. About six inches off, four, about four inches off the side, there's a socket head um, plug there, national pipe tape plug, you pull for the drain. I go a different route. I prefer to just go ahead and it's just kind of less messy in, in my experience. I have a recovery tank here that I usually just sneak down into the intake, or excuse me, down into the down into the uh, crankcase, and I just pull the oil up, just creates a vacuum, just runs off the shop air pressure, it creates a vacuum, evacuates the oil out, it's quick, simple, it's, most of all, it's not messy. So that's the method I use. Um, it's not everybody has access to one of those, so um, if that's not the key, if you don't have access to one of those, or choose to just do it the old fashioned method, the, the plug, there, is a, there are drain plugs on pretty much all your mowers. Um, let me talk a little bit about fuels real quick. Today, ethanol is very prevalent in our fuel system, in our fuels. Uh, ethanol is usually, um, in, in the, uh, at the pump, is usually around 10% ethanol. Ethanol can be real nasty in fuel systems if you let it sit. If you run your vehicle, um, it actually helps bur them burn cleaner, helps combustion, actually helps octane just a little bit. So it has some benefits. But if you let it sit for long periods of time in your vehicles, um, lawn and garden equipment where it sits in the off season or snow blowers through the summer months, when you run into that, what happens is ethanol is an alcohol and it will absorb, it's hygroscop hygroscopic, so it will absorb moisture and any moisture gets in your tank, it will absorb that and where water being heavier than fuel will start separating and dropping out when it drops down into your tanks, your carburetor bowls, it starts turning into this nasty green, slimy, and eventually crusty substance that loves to plug up the tiniest little port in your carburetor, jets, pilot, goes out to the pilot circuits really, really easily because they're obviously the smallest ones. So it, it, there's a couple different things you can do. First of all, you can find non-ethanol uh, fuel, which I'm lucky enough we have a service station here locally that has... Um, a couple of tank, or excuse me, a couple of pumps that are uh, ethanol free. So that's what I've been running. So that's why I have the old style stable. Um, now, the biggest reason why I did that is because up until recently, there hadn't been anybody that had come along that combat, been able to combat the ethanol in a fuel stabilizer. Um, I know there's a couple of them out there now. I think Steel for their uh, chainsaws has one, um, and Stable just came out with one called Stable 360. What it does is it creates a vapor barrier on top of the fuel in the tank, so it makes it imper impervious to mo uh, moisture getting through into the fuel, and then it also helps suspend, keeps that moisture suspended in the fuel rather than conglomerating and settling down and dropping out. So it is, it is available. I'm probably going to try it just uh, for the heck of it here in the next little while, as soon as I, probably as soon as I run out of this, as soon as I get tired of going 10 miles out of my way to... Uh, by ethanol free fuel. But the fact of the matter is, ethanol is here to stay. Um, you might as well get used to it. 
it's not the end of the world. Some people say go out and start it once a month. That's, that, that is a very viable option. You can do that. Um, I prefer to just it's like clean the machines up and put them away for the year. I don't want to fire them up until I'm ready to start mowing lawns or heaven forbid, worst case scenario, blowing that nasty white stuff off the driveway in the winter time. So I just prefer to use some stabilizer. Um, there's a debate, like I mentioned earlier, going on over in Garage Journal about some people saying they don't do anything. They just put them away for the year and pull them out and they work. You know, kudos. You're one of the lucky few. I work on a lot of small engines and to be honest with you, it's been a good year this year just cleaning carburetors from the after effects of ethanol. Um, we didn't have, we had a very mild, very, very mild winter last year. And so this year, there's a lot of snow blowers out that didn't get used last year. So technically they sat now for a year and a half, two years on safe fuel. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of snow blowers out there this year that have been, have plugged up carburetors. So, uh, you know, choose what you want. If you choose to do nothing, that's fine. It's your prerogative. Um, but there you are, you know, are rolling the dice. Um, I, I, I've always put the stabilizer in and, and like I say, this mower here is coming up on 25 years old this year and it's fired up on first or second pull every spring. Uh, weed eater, you know, three or four poles. My snow blower, I just went through and checked it the other day. First pole, it fired right up this season. So um, I, I can't argue with my, oh, I shouldn't say, uh, I should say, but I can't argue with, with, what, with, with, my, with what I choose to do. So it's worked. Those of you that don't do anything and haven't had any problems, great. I congratulate you. Uh, but I, I don't think I'm that lucky. So I prefer to use some uh, fuel stabilizer. And I, I believe in this, you put half an ounce per gallon in. So, uh, nope, I'm sorry, on this one here, one ounce treats two and a half gallons. It seems like the new stuff I was looking at the other day was half an ounce per gallon. But this one here is one ounce to two and a half gallons. So I think this is just shot just a little bit less than a, uh, uh, I think this is about a three quart tank, two and a half or three quart tank. So I'll probably put close to maybe it's a little under half an ounce in it. So, um, okay, let me go ahead and it's kind of, this is kind of noisy because it is an air venturi. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this oil out of here and get all the oil out of the crankcase off camera. And then while I'm doing that, um, I'll probably just add a little bit of fuel stabilizer. So once I get it all done, get the oil in it, um, we can fire it back up, let it run for a few minutes to draw that uh, stabilize the, the fuel the stabilizer in it make sure you draw it in if all you do is put fuel stabilizer in your fuel and then push it away in the corner of the garage you really didn't do much for the fact that the fuel is in the carburetor so you want to make sure and run it enough to get that fuel that you've added the stabilizer to in through the carburetor so um, okay other than that I think that's just uh, pretty much uh, I'll go ahead and pull this out so it's off camera because like I said, it is quite noisy. And uh, I'll be back. All in all, this generally doesn't take more than about an hour, two hours tops if I have a little bit more cleaning up to do on the blade. But um, probably took me a little bit longer just because recording it, but usually this shouldn't take much more than about an hour. But that's basically all there is to getting your lawn and garden equipment ready for the next season. Like I said, I've balanced sharpen the blade, clean the air filter, put stabilizer in the fuel, and change the oil. Um, the only other thing I generally will do is I'll take and spray a little bit around my axle um, uh, shafts just for the end of the bushings. I use a little bit of, uh, oh, uh, Royal Purple makes one called Max Film or uh, Silicro Oil, something like that. Just something to uh, go in there and put a little coating on that. Other than that, I put it away. Oh, I'll that back. One of the things I spray a little bit down in the cables. I take uh, silicone oil and spray it in the cables, work my cables a little bit, and that allows that to creep down in. Um, and other than that, that's it. It takes probably an hour, and come springtime, you pull it out of the garage, first or second pull, and you're mowing the lawn. No hassle in that in the uh, garage trying to. Uh, Tear the carburetor apart and clean the carburetor. So I hope this is informative. 
And again, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to uh, post them in the comments section. Thank you.